Hi there, welcome back. In DaVinci Resolve, the Fusion background is a versatile and powerful tool. We can use it to create all kinds of color backgrounds, from a simple solid color to complex gradients. With help of the flexible color controls, we can also easily animate the background colors if needed. In order to use the Fusion background tool directly in the edit page, I created a template called Essential Animated Background. Once it's installed or copied to the template folder, we can drag the template from the effects panel to the timeline and get a four color gradient background by default. Instead of using individual color controls like in the original background control, we use a gradient color bar to set the colors. The color one at position zero is for the top left corner. Color 2 at position 0.25 is the top right color. Color 3 at 0.75 is bottom left. And color 4 in the middle is the bottom right color. There is no relationship between the background type and the number of color stops on the bar. We can have any number of the colors defined on the bar, regardless of the color type. For example, we can delete two colors from the bar and still use the four corner type. If we change the type to solid, the color one at the beginning will be used as the background color. We can change the color to anything we want or use color one offset to pick a color at a different position on the color bar. The horizontal type uses color one and color two to create a two color gradient image. Similarly, we can change the color on the bar or change the color offset to choose a color from the color gradients. The vertical type also produces a two color gradient background, but in vertical direction. And it uses color one and color three. We talked about this four corner type at the beginning. The last background type is gradient. It uses the colors on the bar to create a gradient background. When it's selected, more controls are displayed for us to customize the gradient directions and patterns. Linear is the default gradient type, which simply draws the gradient along a line from the starting point to the ending point. Turn on the Fusion overlay in the viewer, and we can use this on-screen control to change the start and end position of the gradient. It controls where the gradient begins and ends. Before we move on to other settings, let's talk a bit more about this gradient bar. We can click anywhere on the bar to add a color stop or select an existing color by selecting the triangle below. And then use the color picker or sliders to change color for that color stop. We can also copy a color stop by holding the command or control key while dragging an existing color stop. To move a color stop, we simply drag a color stop left and right along the bar. If we need to control the position precisely, we can also enter the value in the field. To delete a color stop, we drag the color up past the bar. Or press delete key while the color stop is selected. The interpolation space sets which color space is used to calculate the colors between color stops. Most of the time, we don't need to change this option. The offset parameter is used to shift the gradient position relative to the beginning of the bar. The repeating mode is used to set the behavior when the offset control scrolls past the start or end positions. When set to once, the colors will be used only one time. When set to repeat, it repeats the color pattern when it goes beyond the start or end points. Ping pong mode also repeats the colors, but instead of the same gradient pattern, it reverses the color pattern. If we want a background with color stripes, instead of the gradually transitioned colors, we can copy the color stops and arrange them on the bar to reduce the gap between two colors. So that the bar looks like it's made of different color sections instead of gradients. 
This subpixel menu is basically a quality control to set the subpixel precision level when gradient edges are visible. Higher settings will take longer to render, but are more precise. You may not notice much difference in a straight linear gradient image like this, but it can be more noticeable if the image has sharp edges that are not at straight angles. For example, we can create a striped background with the black and white colors. With straight vertical patterns, changing the subpixel settings doesn't change much of the look and feel of the image. But when we change a bit of the angle, the edges become very rough at lower settings. In this case, setting the subpixel to a higher setting can smooth the edge. Now it's much better. Okay, we've gone through all the parameters for a linear gradient background. Now let's take a quick look at other types we can use to create gradient backgrounds. The next one in the drop-down list is Reflect. It mirrors the linear gradient on the other side of the starting point. Square type uses a square pattern to draw the gradient with the starting point at the center of the image. Change the repeating mode to repeat or ping pong to fill the background with repeated color patterns. Cross type uses a cross pattern and the radial type creates circular color gradients. The last one is angle. In this mode, it draws the gradient in a counterclockwise direction using the starting point as the center. And the offset parameter controls at which angle to start the color pattern. When it's set to the repeat mode, we can create a seamless color rotating animation effect by keyframing the offset parameter. Alright, these are the settings used to define the background colors and patterns. The next section in the inspector is to animate the background. When this is enabled, it automatically offset the gradient colors to create the animation effect. Check the reverse direction parameter to reverse color rotation direction. And the animation speed controls how fast the colors scroll from the beginning to the end. By default, it takes the entire duration of the clip to complete the scroll. Increase the value to run the animation faster. For example, set the value to 5, it will run five times faster. The animation control also works for other background types. If the type is solid, the animation will change the background color gradually from the starting color to the ending color. Similarly, the animation works in horizontal and vertical modes. When it's set to the four corner type, the animation looks like the four colors are rotating from one corner to another. The last group of parameters are the soft glow controls, increasing the blend value to apply a bit of the glowing effect to the background. We can use these settings to improve the dynamics of the background. Something like this looks cool. We have now demonstrated the use of the background template in the edit page. Next we will go to the fusion page and look at how this is created using fusion tools. Click the fusion button here in the inspector or right click the clip to open in the fusion page. Double click to expand the group node. This template is made with only two nodes, a background node and a soft glow node. The main goal is to animate the background without too many additions to the already powerful Fusion Background tool. So we modify each color of the background with a gradient color modifier. To centralize the color control, we link the gradient controls of color 2 
3 and 4 to the first gradient color modifier. And use the gradient offset to specify the color used by the background. The start time and end time settings in the gradient color modifier are used to define the time range to scroll the gradient colors from the beginning to the end, which automatically creates the animation effect. A simple expression is used to control the end time value. Based on the animation speed input, it calculates the number of frames to complete the color pattern once. And these user controls are also defined in the background node. In the background control, the gradient type has its own gradient color bar. We also link this to the first modifier color's gradient control with a simple expression. To animate the gradient type background, we use a simple frame render script to calculate the gradient offset. The calculation script is only running when animation is enabled. When animation is disabled, we can still keyframe the offset to create custom animations. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.